we've been looking at ways to use the derivative to tell something about the function, for example, where its extreme points are and so on. Um, one thing we use the derivative for is to tell whether or not a function is increasing or decreasing. Now, um, the real definition of increasing or decreasing is when the inputs move from right to left, if the function, if the values of the function are getting larger, then it's increasing. And when the inputs move from right to left, if the values of the function are getting smaller, then it's a decreasing function. If a function is always increasing on some interval, then we say it's monotonic. So if it's always increasing or always decreasing, one or the other, then it has only one direction, basically, so monotonic. But if you know about derivatives, it's easy to show that if the derivative is greater than zero, then the function has to be increasing. When you move over with the inputs, obviously, if the derivative is positive, then um, the outputs will be getting bigger. On the other hand, if the derivative is negative, you know that the function's tilted down, so that if you uh, move over to the right with the inputs, then the outputs are going to be moving down. So it's a decreasing function. So we can actually use the first derivative to figure out whether or not a function is increasing or decreasing. And we could use that idea to tell whether or not um, a critical point is a max or min. So we're talking about having um, a continuous function that's uh, differentiable um, at every point except perhaps c. And moving across c from left to right, if f prime changes from negative to positive at c, then that would mean that initially the derivative was negative, and then you got to c, and either the derivative was undefined, so you had a corner point or, um, or something, and then the derivative became positive, right? Which would mean that you have to have a local minimum in that case. So on the other hand, if f prime is initially positive, um, and then after this point c, f prime is negative, then right at c there's a critical point, so either the derivative is undefined or, um, or zero, then you know either the function's level like this, or maybe there's some kind of corner, or some reason why the derivative doesn't exist, but it's a continuous function, so you've got a maximum there. On the other hand, if the derivative doesn't change signs, so maybe you're going up and then you're level and then going up again, or you're going down and then you have that critical point and then you're going down again. So maybe you're going down and then level going down again or for some reason as you go down the derivative ceases to exist like maybe it's going vertical or something like that. Then um, f doesn't have an extreme point at c. So basically we're using the derivative to either side of the critical point to figure out if the critical point is a min or a max or neither. Let's look at an example of doing that. We've got this function g, and it says find the open intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. We can find that out from the derivative, and then uh, find any local or absolute extreme values, if any, saying where they occur. Now, if we look at this function, it's x to the fourth, so we know that in the long run it's going to be heading up. So there's, there's no absolute max that's going to be possible on this function. But there is going to be a min, because there's a limit to how low this can go. All right, so let's uh, let's take the derivative and see what we can do to analyze this function. So 4x cubed minus 12x squared, and um, let's see, we take the derivative here and we get plus 8x. So I can factor out a 4x pretty easily. If I take out 4x, that leaves x squared minus 3x plus 2, which is also factorable. Um, if we use an x minus 2 and an x minus 1, then we've got our derivative. Now we can see where the critical points are going to occur on this function. We're going to have a, a, at, uh, at 0, the derivative is going to be 0. At uh, 2, the derivative is going to be 0. And at 1, the derivative is going to be 0. Now we can analyze um, between those critical points. So at each of these critical points, the derivative is 0. Remember, critical points a place where the derivative is 0 or undefined. In this case, there was no place where the derivative wasn't defined, but there were three places where the derivative is 0, so three critical points, 0, 1, and 2. Now, if we're to the left of 0, that means x is negative. So each of these, a negative minus a negative is still negative, a negative minus a negative is negative, so it's a negative times a negative. x itself is negative, so that's three negatives. That's going to be a negative times 4 is still going to be negative, so f prime is less than 0 over here between 0 and 1. Now x is positive, so we have 4 times a positive. 
and then these two numbers, since the number is between 0 and 1, both of these numbers are negative. So we have a positive times a negative times a negative. That's going to be positive. So here the derivative is greater than 0. And then between 1 and 2, um, this one becomes positive, but this remains negative, and x is, is positive. So now the derivative is less than 0. And then finally, once we're bigger than 2, all of these are positive. Bigger than 2 take away 1 has to be bigger than 1, so it's positive. Bigger than 2 take away 2 has to be greater than 0, and bigger than 2 is positive. So we have positive times positive times positive. The derivative is going to be positive. So, All right. So we know basically our function um, comes down, levels out, goes up to here, right? Levels out at 1 again, goes down because the derivative is negative. Levels out at 2 because the derivative is 0, and then goes up again. So our function is something like this. Now we want to figure out um, what's what's going on. We can see there's going to be a relative max right here because by that first derivative test the function was going up and then later it was going down. So there's going to be a relative max at, at uh, x equal 1. There's a relative max when x equals 1. Um, and there's going to be some relative mins. Let's see. Because the function was going down and then turning around at 0, there, there will be a, a relative min there. So relative min when x equals 0 and when x equals 2. Now we should plug those in and see what we get. If we take g of 0, we get out 0. If we take g of 2, um, then we're going to get 16 minus 2 cubed is 8, 4 times 8 is 32, plus uh, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 32 plus 16 is 0. Ah, okay, so these actually are more than just relative means. They're both at the level of 0. So g of 2 equals 0 and g of 0 equals 0. So we actually have um, the minimum value is 0. So I guess I should have said these are absolute mins, right, when x equals 0 and when x equals 2. And the absolute minimum is 0 because that's the lowest value we can get out of this function. It occurs at, these, at both of these minima here. Let's do another one. Mm, this one's a, a polynomial function. Now, I can see that there's not going to be an absolute max or an absolute min on this function. The way I can tell is when I look at this function, if I think about x being large, if x is really large, then this plus 1 here doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference. Because if x is a really large number, let's say maybe like 100, you take 100 and square it, you've got 10,000, so we've got 30,000. There's not much difference between 30,000 and 30,001, right? It's pretty insignificant. So if x is large, um, our function is basically x cubed over 3x squared, and kind of ignore that one, right? Which is equal to 1 third x. So in the long run, I can tell that this function is going to approach a line with slope 1 third. And so I can tell in the long run, the function on the right is going to keep going up and up and up, so there won't be an absolute max. And on the left, is going to keep going down and down, so there won't be an absolute min. But there might be some relative minima. And I want to figure out what intervals uh, this function is increasing or decreasing on. So let's do take the derivative and see what's going on there. To take the derivative, it's going to require the quotient rule. We'll get the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top, which is x cubed, times the derivative of the bottom, which is 6x. So all over the bottom squared. OK, so we have 6x to the fourth. And then we have plus 3x squared. And then we have um, minus oh, 6x to the fourth again. And this is all over. I forgot to square the bottom. 3x squared plus 1 squared. So there's a, ooh, it's not 6x to the fourth. 3 times 3 is 9. So. 9x to the 4th minus 6x to the 4th would be 3x to the 4th plus 3x squared all over 3x squared plus 1 to the 4th. Now if I factor the top, I have x squared 
like oh, I can also pull out a 3. If I do that, then I'll have left out um, an x squared plus 1 there. Okay, all over 3x squared plus 1 to the 4th. So, I ask, when can the derivative be 0 undefined? Well, the only way it could be undefined if we were able is, would be if we were able to get 0 in the denominator here, but since it's uh, x squared plus some positive number, it's going to be impossible to make that 0, because this number has to be positive. Right? If you square it, it's greater than 0, so 3 times a positive number has to be, or a number greater than or equal to 0, sorry. So that's got to be at least 0. You add 1, it's got to be at least 1. So the bottom part here is definitely positive. It can't ever go to 0. So, okay, so the only way we can have a critical point then would be if the, if the uh, derivative is 0, and the only way a fraction can be 0 is equal is if its numerator is equal to 0. And this part of the numerator can't be 0, so the only way it could be 0 is if the x is 0. So there's just a single critical point at um, x equal 0. So let's see what goes on there at 0. Let's say, oh, well, something to notice in this function is that um, that the derivative is always positive. Well, the derivative is, except at 0, the derivative is always a positive number because the bottom is guaranteed to be positive, and the top here, if, uh, if x isn't 0, then we've got a positive number times another positive number, which make it positive. So the function's always increasing. It just happens to have a level spot here at 0. When you plug 0 to the function, you get out 0. So this is the point of the function. We know it's level there. We know it's increasing before you get there and increasing after. So there are no um, local, there's no absolute extremes and no local extremes. So no absolute extrema and no local extrema.